Good evening and welcome back to SF Commons. We're interrupting a special program tonight because we would like to bring to you this urgent message and this urgent program regarding a major negotiations that's going on with the contracts of the lowest level workers in the California state government, the SEIU 1000. Currently, the SEIU 1000 is ne negotiating a three-year contract with the state of California. Let me just tell you who this SEIU 1000 members are. Why is this significant? The SEIU 1000 members are the lowest classification members of the state workers of the state of California. They are your custodians. They are your nursing assistants, they are your teachers, they are the ones who are waiting on you, they are the Department of Motor Vehicles doing your renewals. They are the cogs in this wheel of the state government. And they are also the same people, the same working class who live paycheck to paycheck, who get their paycheck and by the time they get it, by the time the government takes almost half of their paycheck, they have to worry about the next paycheck. The pay by the time they pay the bills, the next the, the paycheck is gone. And a lot of the workers are victims of payday loan lenders. Yes, you heard it right. A lot of them are victims of the usurious payday loan lenders because they're not able to make ends meet. The inflation rate is at 2.44% and the contract that's being offered to them by our new governor, Gavin Newsom, is negative 3.5%. We would like to introduce Sophia Perkins, a uh, bargaining unit representative of the SEIU 1000 to explain to us the major components of the negotiations on the SEIU 1000 contract for three years. Hello, Sophia. How are you? I'm good, Marina. Thank you for having me here tonight. Great. Thank you. So talk about what is happening with the contract negotiations with the SEIU 1000. Well, I know right now that we're, we are in um, a tentative agreement ratification process, um, which means it's going to go out to the members of SEIU to be uh, voted on. Um, at, you, they can vote at their work sites or they can uh, call SEIU Local 1000 um, headquarters and request a ballot to um, do a mail-in ballot process. Ra the um, SBAC ratification was September Third, and the SBAC is where um, the statewide bargaining advisory committee gets together and actually votes on the tentative agreement to send it out to the members for ratification. Right, okay. Let me go through the numbers that have been reported in some of their ratification member meetings. This contract will start on January 1st of 2020. Yes. And that between January 1st of 2020 and June 30 of 2020, the SEIU 1000 members will not get a raise. Correct. But however, they will pay 2.3% of an increase in retiree health benefits and starting July 1st, 2020, the tentative agreement is for a period of three years where the SEIU 1000 members will get 7%. However, the, there is an increase of 3.5% per year on their contribution to the retirement health benefits so that 
in the end of the three-year period, their contribution to the retirement health benefits amounts to 10.5%, whereas they're getting 7%, which then nets to a loss of 3.5% to the average as the IU 1000 member. Now, other classifications are getting other things, but in terms of overall, in terms of overall increase to state workers, it's 7% of general increase over a three-year period, less the 10.5% of healthcare contributions, which then comes out to a negative 3.5%. That's what I understand. Yes, my understanding is it's a three-year contract, and with, within the three-year contract, we will uh, uh, have a 7% increase in general salary um, increases. Um, there, there are special salary adjustments for 159 classifications, but we have to realize that Local 1000 represents 800 various classifications within the nine bargaining units that we represent. Um, of the 159 classifications, only 14 classifications received the special salary adjustment that were in the lower paid uh, bargaining units, which were um, unit four and unit 15. So, and then there's, you know, 45 various classifications that will be receiving a base salary adjustment which means that they're going to be brought up to $15 an hour, right? Um, I know that our first increase of uh, 2.5 takes place July of 2020. The next increase would be July of, uh, of 2021. And then the next increase would be July of 2022. So we have to remember that, you know, our OPEB goes up January 1st, 2020. So we as Local 1000 members who are only receiving the general salary increase, we will be paying um, 3.5 as our um, OPEB goes up before we even see any increase from this contract at all. I think the people that, um, the, the people that are gonna see uh, immediately, immediate changes are only the few receiving the bilingual um, pay differential. Um, which the bilingual pay differential only covers the people that are certified by the state of California to receive that bilingual differential. Um, the state of California is getting away from the bilingual certification because they are doing more automated processes where an uh, individual could call in and actually uh, indicate through automation what uh, what language um, they would like exactly, to receive exactly. to be interpreted. Now, the one-time pay uh, special salary adjustment, it seems that these are the type of classifications that ordinarily, outside of the state government, they will be making a lot of money. Like, you're, you have your technology specialist yes. uh, that could easily make 30 to 40 percent more outside, especially with the advancement in, in technology, or where you have nurses where there's a lot of competition because of the demand for health care. Yes. So this one-time increase that they're getting, I'm not sure if a lot of them are happy about it. You mean the 5%, the right, special salary right, adjustments right, yeah. for some? And there's very few of them, too. Yes, there's very few. And we have to realize it's like 145 um, classifications that are going to be receiving the special salary adjustment that are already making, they're already in uh, classifications making, you know, top salary from uh, the state already. Um, and we also have to realize that Local 1000, um, prior to the officer stipend, never negotiated special salary adjustments in their contract because a union should represent members across the board, not special groups. Exactly. How did they come up with that? Um, well, honestly, the special salary adjustment is attached to um, the officer stipend that Local 1000 now has. 
And who are those? Who are and, those special uh, stipends? So the, the stipends right now go to the four uh, um, statewide officers. And I know that um, currently two of the new vice presidents are not taking the stipend. Right. Right. Um, well, our president, for instance, Yvonne Walker, her regular salary as a secretary is fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Per year as a state employee, yes. right? But then she's on leave on that, and she's working as the president of the union. But she's getting a forty-five thousand dollars stipend, which brings her entire salary up to about over one hundred eleven thousand dollars. Yes, that is correct. So then, the stipend that we're talking about, the forty-five thousand, if these folks get the stipend increases. Is it true that sh her stipends will increase as well? Is that so how the, that works? The, 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 so the stipend is, co is connected to the um, highest paid classification within Local 1000, right? So as we negotiate special salary adjustments, yes. I believe that the special salary adjustments are attached to that classification that keeps bumping up that percentage of that stipend pay right. for the officers. Well, how about the, the chief of staff? Uh, the chief of staff of the president is making, what, $153,000? Yes, uh, uh, approximately $153,000. And, you know, um, our chief of staff is actually Margarita Maldonado, who the members actually you know, didn't reelect um, to be an officer within our local. Now, why would a chief of staff of a union make that kind of money? I mean... Well, a chief of staff, you know, in, in the private sector, I mean, that that's about the comparable ma wage that chief of staff make. In the private sector? In, in private sector. Um, and, you know, we also have to realize that our chief of staff um, position was vacant for almost eight years prior to this last election. If it's eight years vacant, then probably we didn't need it. Exactly. I mean, the point is, the union members are paying monthly dues, right? We are paying monthly taking dues. taking out their paycheck. What do you think is the average, average, how much do union members pay in dues? Well, I know, I know that, you know, you're capped out at $90, right? Um, right now, my, my union dues are fluctuating because, you know, of, you know, the increase from, you know, this last contract, right? right? But then, you know, minus the OPEB increase, um, this actually contract that was supposed to be the best contract ever actually ended up being a takeaway contract for me. Right, right. Um, so if this, is, this new contract that we are getting ready to ratify is supposed to be historical, you know, um, I, I don't really understand you know all, all the calculations in, right. in, within the contract I know that you know um, like the two hundred and sixty dollars for medical you know it's being called a stipend um, I, I believe I work for the fifth largest economy in the world the state of California we shouldn't have to be supplemented for our medical um, we need to be paid and valued for the work that we do for the state of California because without us the programs of California do not run. Right, exactly. Um, and, you know, with this $260 medical offset stipend, um, it's only going to be um, impacting 53% of our members that we represent. Right. Because of the fact, you know, people, uh, uh, you know, other people, they have their spouse, they're taking their spouse's benefits, or they're on, they've elected for flex elect, Right. Um, so it, it's calculated out that only 53% of our represented will be able to take advantage of the $260. We also have to realize that the, 200, tax too, right? the $260 will be taxed. It's not purseable. So we can't really count it as a raise because a raise would be purseable. Right. So we're going to be taxed on it. Um, some of us will be thrown into a higher tax bracket. Right. Um, some of us, our union dues are going to go up because our union dues are based on our salary. And not all will get it because a lot right. of people have their spouses who are carrying the ins the, their insurance. Yes, so, they, so won't they, they won't even benefit from it. Right. And then we also have to realize that it goes away. It's not there forever. Exactly. Um, it actually expires, I think, one month or at the same time that right. our our you know, contract that we're trying to uh, ratify right, right now will expire. Now, what about this this geo geographical 
uh, pay special treatment that the union leaders are talking about. I believe that, you know, um, we were going to secure, you know, um, a geo pay in some of the counties in California. Okay, what are they covering? That Santa Barbara? That our members are actually really suffering in. Um, Santa Barbara, and, San, Luis Obispo, San Luis Obispo, Orange County, what else? Um, Santa Cruz. Those Santa are, Cruz, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, and Orange County. Yeah, those are really nice areas. Those are nice areas, and you know, um, it ha they, they, they actually have those counties actually have the the least amount of local one thousand represented density there. Um, to me, Maybe they visit. to me, um, if we were you know laying the foundation to build on this contract, we should have secured a a um, a county for geo pay that had a density of members that could have benefited from the geo pay differential. Yeah, like uh, what about San Francisco? San Francisco, but Los Oakland, Angeles, Silicon Valley, Los Sil Angeles. Santa Clara. Right? Exactly. Um, uh, those are very high. We we hear our members talk every day about the cost of living going up. The I mean, cost the rent of living. increases are like from 10 to 15 percent. You have families living with families because they can't afford to live on their own. It was exactly, right? yeah, yeah, especially. And, and again, you know, we're state workers. Right, yeah. You know, we, we should be valued and paid, you know, um, by our governor for the work that we, we contribute to California every day to keep and it moving. And there are certain classes. Well, let me see, did the legislature... Did the mayor, didn't the governor's office get a big raise? Didn't they get like a 21% bump? I don't know if they got a 21% bump. I know about a 4% raise. I know, I know All that. Right. And, you know, so. Year. Yeah. And, and so, but you I, know, I you like know, 21. us walking away with a, um, a 7% raise over four three years, year, yeah. three years. Well, three and a half years, yeah, really. Yeah, three and a half years. And the first six months, the first half a year, we get nothing. Right, right. Um, And then, you know, our OPEB is going up, you know. And it's so, you know, a lot of people, I know Local 1000 put out a calculator. And a lot of members are, you know. Losing um, money. Really, you know, putting in their current, you know, their personal information to this calculator to see what this next contract means to them. I've had members come back to me and say it's a $300 takeaway. It's a, up to a $900 takeaway. And, you know, to me, a contract should never have, should never be taken away from members. Exactly. We should, we, as a union, we should be negotiating for members across the board. For a living wage. Right, for a living wage, not special groups. Now, let's talk right. about the oversight, okay? And this is the thing that I think bothers a lot of people. People are voting, yes. right? There's like 52,000 paid members. You yes, think? yes. However, the people who organize the election, the voting system, the ratification system, and who are the people who are doing the oversight are people who actually voted for it and negotiated it. Yes, that is so true. So isn't, isn't that... <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Um, isn't, the people isn't that kind of like a, a, a rigged... So the members that are actually that actually negotiated the contract will be um, sponsoring and putting on the worksite meetings um, to, you know, encourage people, you know, to come and vote for our contract, you know, the tentative agreement. Um, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, the people who negotiated the contract are out there talking about the contract, right? Because exactly they want a contract, right? They want that that yes vote. Um, and were they the same guys who got the bump on the special salary increases too? Yes, um, we, we've saw, actually right? we we actually have put together a spreadsheet, and most of the bargaining team made sure that their classification secured a special salary adjustment as well. Um, you know, all DMV classifications got a special salary adjustment of five percent. Um, I know that DMV was in the media uh, during our contract negotiation. And that was an issue and a problem that our governor should have dealt with with DMV and not made it part of our contract and took it away from right. other people. Um, when we secured a yeah. uh, the the reclass for DMV like seven maybe eight years ago, right? right. It was a side letter. So I think what the takeaway on this discussion would be that for the interest of the union and the members, right it would seem that the clamor for union members 
is for the SEIU 1000 leadership to go back to the negotiating table and represent the entire membership of the union, all 96,000 union members, plus include, which includes the 52,000 union uh, paying dues members, that they represent the entire body instead of just different parts. What do you think? Right, exactly. Um, and so, you know, that's why I've been, you know, um, receiving calls and emails from around the state from members. Um, and, and I encourage them right. to educate yourself because right now your power is in your vote. We need a union that represents all of the members. Mm -hmm. We need a strong union that advocates and, and fights for the union members. And we need a strong union leadership. Like Sophie Perkins here, who actually ran for president. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you again next time. Good night.